Jordan has always done things the hard way. He made his millions in Formula One, the toughest, richest, and most competitive sport in the world. He's the man who discovered Michael Schumacher and single-handedly took on the might of Ferrari and McLaren. Now, Eddie is facing his toughest ever challenge. He's trying to transform the lives of eight hardened car criminals. He likes cars, we like cars. He's got money, we want money. Let's see what you know about cars. With just seven weeks to change their attitudes. I'm spending a lot of my time, you're spending a lot of your time. What's the problem? He can go himself. Make them fit for the world of work. You're pissing me off. And build them into a winning race team. Can Eddie get their lives back on track? This could be your last opportunity to change direction. When Formula One supremo Eddie Jordan first met the eight car criminals, he underestimated the scale of the challenge he had undertaken. OK, let's see what you know about cars. He knows what he's doing. He's a bit of an expert at this. Measure, strip the wires back, join together, boom, started. Aiming to create a race team, Eddie started training them as mechanics. Uh, we're struggling to get even the tyre changed. It's gone the wrong way, isn't he? Yeah, lefty Lucy, Right, righty tighty. Yeah. Eddie turned them into victims to try and break their criminal mindset. Just for a joyride, all this. No one should have to go through this. Needing drivers for the future banger race, Eddie pitted them against each other on the track and then showed them how it's done. Watch his technique now. Yeah, look, 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 look. It's a privilege for us to get to watch him do this year. Despite beating them on the track, Eddie's fight to turn these lads around had only just begun. Come on, 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 then. I didn't want it to end like this, you know. You're a bad influence. I wanted you out of here. I don't like failure. I have a lot of work to do to get these boys into shape. This week, Eddie will be picking one of this motley crew to become his team boss for the final race. The job requires good motivational skills and the ability to lead by example. He's about to find out just how hard this search will be. I want to see who can give orders. Right, 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 right! Oh my God! Who can keep their head. Don't talk to me, I saw you out right here. They're now starting to fight with each other. I'm not doing it, that's the end of it. You've got to believe more in yourself. I just hope he doesn't do something wrong, because I think the team's going to kill him. Yeah, Richie, is that the, uh, That's the half inch or the quarter inch drive? Half inch. Eddie's project includes three days a week of mechanics training. At the end, there'll be the prospect of gaining a qualification. No messing around. Anybody flouts the health and safety then you'll be excluded. Are we all clear on that, guys? Yeah. yeah. yeah crystal clear. With the help of trainers Phil and John, Eddie's offering the lads the opportunity to turn their backs on crime. There are three different types of setup internally for the shop silver, but I'll get you the paperwork and go through that with you. I was trying to tell you that it's just going to confuse you. Having walked off the project last week following a fight with one of the other lads, Garth has decided to give things another chance. I want to do this project. So I'm going to have to just keep to it, innit? Whatever happens, this could be the last ever opportunity I've got to actually get a good qualification, so... The project offers many of the lads a chance to make up for misspent school days. I used to go private school, but I left from there before my GCSEs. I didn't get no qualifications from any school or any college. You're trying to avoid getting your, ha getting your hands on that. Yeah, I went to uh, Elton Green about a year, then I got kicked out of there and I went to a unit. And didn't really do no work there or anything, so I got kicked out of that. Tighten these bolts up, and this one starts riding back up and it tightens the a string together. Edge. I had an argument with one of my teachers. I smacked him and he went down the stairs, broke his arm and I got kicked out. If Nicky didn't do his best on this course, please God, everything turns out OK, but if he doesn't, then... I don't know, because he hasn't got no qualifications, you know, it's, there's nothing out there as it is with qualifications. That, that one's in, that one won't. I feel I can relate to these kids. All of us love speed, cars, racing. But I got extremely lucky. I was given the chance. 
and I took it. What I have to do with these kids is at least give them the chance to do something with their lives. Dave, can I just grab you for a second? Eddie has appointed youth worker Vinay to keep an eye on the boys. I just noticed um, you've got a bandage on your hand, so I thought, and there's a bit of an open wound there, so I thought we'll wrap that up properly. What have you done today? Because I remember you did that last week. What's, what's this new wound you've got? Uh, basically, I picked a fight with someone and the head was a lot bigger than me and he stabbed me. <laughs> and he stabbed you, did you say? Yes. OK. He's got a quite a deep wound on his hand, which, um, according to him, it's, it's kind of gone into his ligaments and things. So that's quite serious, quite a serious damage that they've done. You know, these guys get involved with some funny stuff outside of the project. Obviously, their life still goes on. These kids have been up to all sorts of mischief in their past. They've been fighting authority all of their lives. To get a leader out of them is going to be extremely difficult. Eddie has arranged for a special day out to help him choose the team boss. I'm looking for somebody who is a natural leader, somebody who can take control of a situation, somebody who's been given the respect of the other people. But most importantly, and probably the key to all of this, somebody who can communicate properly. I reckon I what did we do today? Today? You know, after the first week, probably Richie has emerged as favourite for the role of team boss. But very often, somebody who does more talking, all of that chit-chat, all of that bravado business, does actually less in other aspects. Big up to Brian, see you when I get home, peace. First bad offence that I got put in prison for, I was 16. Be devoted robbery, be devoted drugs, car theft. There's no adrenaline rush like being chased by the police. Like there's nothing like it. The only things I haven't been devoted is murder and probably arson. Dave is a dark horse because he doesn't say too much. But what he does say is intelligent. He thinks about what he's going to say. He has a good analytical brain. In total, I've been arrested for 23 offences. I think I am pretty good at breaking into cars. Uh, the fastest I've done it in is about 30 seconds. We usually just joy ride about in it, and when we're bored of it, we'll blow it up. Nicky is, again, also a naturally quiet person, but I think he's astute. I think he's very reliable, very dependable, and he has been one of the most diligent members of this group. I've got a bad temper. If someone's pushing me to my limits, then yeah, it is acceptable that I use violence. If there was another way, then yeah, I'd use that, but if there's no other way, then of course I'm going to use violence. If I'm carrying on the way I am, then of course I'm going to end up in prison, and I've got no one to blame, just myself. I need these guys to be able to work in a hostile environment with each other, then we'll see who's able to emerge as a possible leader in that group. As none of the lads have driving licences, the exercise has to take place on a private driving course in Hertfordshire. Each of them will have to drive a 4x4 around a course in the quickest time possible without hitting any cones. On top of this, Eddie's come up with a twist to see who can show initiative under pressure. Uh, today, you're all going to have the opportunity of driving this 4x4. And a little uh, blindfold here. With a car full of revved up backseat drivers, Eddie's about to find out who can keep a cool head. Right, 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 right. Oh. oh my god, oh my god! I'm not doing it, that's the end of it. <laughs> As part of his search for a team leader, Formula One boss Eddie Jordan has set his eight car criminals a unique challenge. Right, Eddie, steady. Yeah. Go, 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 go! Little right, little right, little big right, big right. Straight, straight up, right, 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 right. Having split the lads into two teams, each member has the chance to demonstrate their communication skills by directing the blindfolded driver around a course. It's a good experience. It's like nothing I've ever done before in my whole life. Right, 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 right! Big right, big right, big right, big right! Big right, big right! Oh! Stop, 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 stop! Stop! <laughs> I'm going to be 
glad to see what these lot do because you've got master controlman Dave in the back that thinks he's the Don that just messed that last one totally up, like balls it totally. Okay, blindfold on. Aaron, who's currently on a year's probation for car theft, is ready at the wheel. Team boss contender Dave has a chance to prove his leadership skills by navigating him around the course. Slowly, slowly, go, slowly, go, 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 go. Right, down a little bit on the go, right. Go, 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 go. Down yeah, a little right, bit yeah. on the right. Go, go forward, carry on going straight. He's going to hit the cone. He's going to hit the cone. He's going to miss it. I'll hit the cone. Hard, hard. No, it's too hard. Not too hard. Go, oh, go! Nice. He's got the one. He's got the one cone. You've run his cone. Go on, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Right, straight up, straight up. Let rip the Oh my god. <laughs> Go on, must you take over this? <laughs> You're crossing wrong guy! Left! Dave's directions left. don't seem yeah. to be having right. the desired effect. Slow down, left, more, left, more. Right, right a little bit. Hard. Oh my god! So you said hard right a little bit. Yeah. That's free. Hard right, hard right. <laughs> yeah, that's hard right, yeah. Right. Slow down, slow down, hard right. Yeah. Might as well pull over now. Well, that's coming for us. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even going to go for it. Where am I then? <laughs> You're You're not just, no, no. I'll tell you where to go. <laughs> I was surprised because Dave, I think, is one of the guys who could be a good leader. And based on the results that we've just seen there now, he was hopeless. Found it funny, but then again, he's let the team down. Now I feel stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it. it. Next up for the blue team is King. That's Come on, King. No, that's the end of it. I'm not doing it. That's the end of it. I'm just not doing it. Everybody have a go. No, I'm just not doing it. From the beginning of the project, 17-year-old King has resisted taking part in activities. He's very much the loner of the group. Sometimes I like to be around myself. Sometimes I get aggressive. Sometimes people piss me off, so I just go pick a fight. I had the choice that I'd be a race car driver, but right about now, I don't know how to get into it, what to do to get into it, so I don't know. King, I will look after you, man. Get in the front. Come on, get him, man. Come on, come on. Come King. Come on. I will look after you. Get in the front. Trust me, he's a good experience, King. Man. Listen, you know something? No one cares. This is going to be fun. To see who can show initiative, Eddie changes the rules. This time, you cannot say left, right, fast, straight. So you've how got do to, you know where to go? You've got to work out a system of advising him. You've got to Stop, take up. West, not. <laughs> so just make that nice. Actually, say that again. Yeah, we could go. How does it go? North, east, east, south, east, east, west, north, and south. Could he's he's on the case. Well done, King. Right. Well yeah. done. So, are you, west, east. are you ready? Yeah. Ready, steady, go! West. 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 It'll be a challenge for short tempered Nikki to keep them on course. East, 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 east. East. He's doing all right. East. East. North, north, north. Oh! Stop, stop, stop. Done it. No cones, no cones, no cones. Boom! Yeah. 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 See, I told you, big man. I told you, big man. Yeah. Nice instructions at the back, mate. Bad. Nice teamwork. Big one, King. Bad. Instructions, mate, it's all good. Yeah, man, you smacked it. Yeah, I'm feeling quite good about it that I didn't hit any of the cones. I'm feeling quite all right. With King's idea and Nikki's directions, the blue team clock up the fastest time of the day and win the challenge. OK, we'll talk to the winners. Richie, how do you think you got on? We had some good communicators in there today. Nick, Nick was a good communicator. But the guy who was driving who had to think up the strategy of the blue team, it was the King man. King man that came up and with And King it. didn't want to drive, so why were you such an old pussy when you wouldn't <laughs> want to drive the car? Yeah, but I still did it and you're still complaining. No, no that's no. what I'm saying. We had to push you <laughs> he's into He's pushing you, he's man. making, he's making, he's giving and you props, man. And you turned out to be brilliant. Yeah. So you've got to believe more in yourself, man. Yeah, man. Give yourself confidence. the chance. Having had their temperaments tested, and, uh, thoughts return to who has what it takes to be a leader. Yeah, man, you smacked it today, man. You're cool, calm and collected, like, and you've got the job done, do you know what I'm saying? As a potential leader, Nicky is improving every time I see him. His instructions to the driver were key. He's creeping into that little group that I'm watching very closely, and he has a chance, but no more than that at this stage. Dave might be the team leader, because Dave's quite good at some of the stuff. He's not that good at communicating, as we saw earlier. I mean, to be honest, yeah, being blindfolded and going around the track, what's the point of that? You're never going to do it 
it's got nothing to do with the banger racing. It's got nothing. Yes, yeah, got a little bit to do with communication, but that's it. I don't think Dave could do it like because he's too boisterous, man. He, he, no, he thinks he knows too yeah, much and he's not willing one. to take anything from anyone else. He's got the else. brains for it. He's got he the brains. Don't use it properly he just don't, yeah, he just don't use it properly. Richie has it to lose. You know, I think he's emerged so quickly that he is the group leader. He does a little bit more talking than anyone else, which could be a bad thing in some respects because he likes the sound of his own voice. I don't think I'd be a good manager because I'm a bit too. I'm quite high up, so I think I'd be better actually doing the mechanics than actually telling people what to do. I've got to pick the leader by the end of this week, and uh, Richie would be the favourite as we speak, but uh, I am sure there will emerge some very close competition in this. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Back at the garage, the course continues with brakes and suspension. Right, do you know what all the bits are called? You got your disc, yep. your caliper. Yep. The day started over an hour ago, but some of the lads are late. They're not used to committing to regular hours, and timekeeping has been a constant problem since the project began. Police are all over my area looking for some muggers. Just happens that I'm a mixed race boy that, suit, that matches one of the descriptions. So they pulled me over, and then my Oyster car decided it weren't working for the station. At 21, Richie is the oldest of the lads and has been in trouble with the law since the age of 10. I was in foster care from about the age of 15. I spent a lot of my time in a bit of a mixed up place and I went through a lot of bad patches that. If it weren't for this project, probably the worst case scenario would have been that I was back out in the wrong crowd of people again, causing crime, doing stupid things and probably getting arrested and back in prison by the end of this year. <laughs> I'm going to scratch it. Sometimes I worry about him because he's been to prison twice and I really wouldn't want him to go to prison again. Aaron is the last to arrive. He was called into his local police station to collect his lost mobile phone. The police then revealed they'd found it in a stolen car. I was driving a car, a stolen car, and I left my phone there like a dickhead. I had my, all my numbers, all my house numbers on it, and then they tracked it down and I got nicked and all my fingerprints were in there as well. So, so this has just catched up with me now. So, no, no, there ain't no more, so this is the last one. So. With the late trainees playing catch-up, the others have to sit around waiting. I am so bored. I am very hungry. <laughs> hunger is not the problem at the moment. It's more than it is. A bit pissed off at the people that like, came in late and they expected to start on the work we were already doing. I mean, me and Nick have done that with suspension and they're still trying to get theirs all on and everything. I suppose we've got to wait for them, because everyone's at different levels. So it still pisses me off where we've got to wait around and do nothing like this. I'm going to resort to destruction soon. <laughs> Nicky's finished his morning's work and has been summoned to see Eddie in his office. It gives him a chance to get something off his chest. How are you getting on? Quite good, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Yeah? Yeah, having fun. Is there anything that's annoying you in, really. in the group? No, no, no one's really getting on my nerves or anything. The only thing that does annoy me is when people turn up late because basically they're just letting the team down. That's all that I really get annoyed with. In your view, who would make a good team boss? Um, I reckon Richie. And why? Because uh, Richie, he, he stands out a bit more. He likes to have his voice heard now and again. And everyone listens to him when he does talk. How about yourself? I, w I wouldn't mind being a team manager, yeah. I wouldn't mind. And do you think you could win over the guys, that they'd respect your decision, whether it was right or wrong? I think they respect me either way because uh, they all like me in there. We all got get on well. OK, thanks for now. Cheers. You know, a couple of days ago, I would not have put Nicky in my top three for team boss. But now, slowly has emerged a real candidate. He's passionate about what he's doing, and yet he's thinking about the team, not just himself. And that doesn't always happen. So he possibly should be the team manager. 
There ain't a screw, there ain't a screw place for me. Are you sure that's actually lined up? Yeah. Dave's boredom has got the better of him. He can't resist trying to break into the boot of one of the test cars. These are called tumblers. These are what makes the lock work. The key goes through them, and then when you turn the uh, when the key goes in, it pushes them up to well, a certain level. Seventeen-year-old Dave has spent the last year sleeping in a hostel after falling out with his parents. He hasn't had a permanent job since leaving school a year ago. During school, I was bullied quite a bit. I didn't exactly have any friends. I argued with my mum quite a bit when I was at home. We never really got on, and so I was chucked out at the age of 17. I worry about David all the time. I used to think that he'd end up in prison because one of these times he's not going to get away with it. Holding the inside, the lock's breaking up. Open. Before long, old habits start to surface and mischief spreads around the whole garage. Nah, he should spin and bend all the metal on his head. When they're breaking into the cars and stuff, they're basically ruining it for us because if they break, keep breaking into it, we can get these cars taken away from us so we won't be able to learn any piece of mechanics in that. So basically they are ruining it for us. They've done the task, but obviously as soon as they've done the task, they've gone off and decided to do what they want to do in the workshop. And obviously, you know, if it does happen again, then I will say to Eddie that they need to leave because it's just not acceptable. When Eddie hears that the lads' attitudes have nosedived, he calls a crisis meeting in the workshop. You're pissing me off. I find out somebody has been breaking into cars. I don't want to hear another such story. We've all agreed that that's gone out of your system. You're looking for a new future, a new life. I'm very upset with the attitude and with the lateness. Your timekeeping has been crap. That we've got five weeks, actually less than five weeks, before this race. We have a lot of work to do. And if this had been in Civvy Street and a normal job, you'd be down the road. So from now on, no more lateness, and I want 100% improvement on the attitude. No more dicking about. Putting his search for a team boss on hold, Eddie is forced to address the more pressing matter of their attitude. Unless they shape up, they're not going to pull together as a team. The race will be a disaster. And my name's on the line here, and I don't want to look like an idiot. I want to test their dedication. I need to see who will put serious hard graft into this. Eddie asks youth worker Vinay to prepare the lads for some extra work. So if you don't like what I say, don't give me the brunt of it. You can tell me. They've no idea what they'll have to do, only that they'll have to come in on a Saturday. Got a couple of chores he wants you to do. One of them is get in here at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> I knew you weren't going to like that. We have to be here at 7.30. Basically, you have to be here before 7.30, because 7.30 is when the bus leaves, so if you're not here at 7.30, they're going to go. The reaction was quite better than I expected, actually, because um, there was a, a major, whoa. That was King. Obviously, he's not happy. I'm not coming. You don't like see my face at 7.30 in the morning. Very sorry to say, but, but I'm not coming. We're going to go out on that as well. Clubbing or something, yeah. innit? If, if I come, I come. If I don't come, I don't. It's 7.15 on Saturday morning. The first to arrive at the garage for Eddie's mystery task is Nicky. I'm quite used to getting up early. When I was in the army, I got up pretty early. I think it does show that I'm interested in what we're doing and I want to get on with everything, so... Although King was adamant he had better things to do on a Saturday morning, surprisingly, he's the next to show up. I just had to see what some genius had planned for today, boy. Just had to see it. Dave's running late. Is he? He just woke up about 10 minutes ago. Oh, oh, no, he, he, I thought the coach was leaving at half seven. We're leaving, a minute. Yeah. Well, she's sound half asleep. You're not coming in? Well, I don't think Eddie's going to be happy with you, bro. The bus leaves shortly after 7.30, as promised. With three of the lads not showing up, the group have failed the first stage of Eddie's task. Some of the lads become apprehensive after arriving at an equestrian centre. 
I'm not going near no horses. There's no way on earth that I'm getting on a horse. I don't like them at all, man. When they start galloping and shit, I fall off here. I swear to God, I don't like them. I'm not going on no horse. No way, no hair, no money, no nothing. Nothing is getting me on a horse. Nothing. Nothing. Eddie's plan to get the lads back on track proves a winner for some, yes! but spells trouble for others. If I thought that I was wasting my time, I'd kick you out. Eddie has sent his trainees to some stables to instill a work ethic. Having put his search for a team boss on hold, he's decided to test their dedication to the project. Only five out of the eight lads managed to turn up. The lads are about to learn how they will be spending their Saturday morning. Good morning. I gathered that there was going to be eight of you. Uh, problem. Most of them didn't turn up. They didn't turn up? <laughs> OK, well, that means you guys have got more work. All right, well, if you want to come with me, I'll show you. <laughs> well, what you're going to help me with today is actually cleaning the stables out. All right, so we're going to start with this stable. As you can see, first thing to do, as you can see, most of the dirt is here. So if you look at your stable first and look and see where most of the obvious dirt is, start there. I'd be very surprised if you get less than a full wheelbarrow out of each stable. The inner city lads aren't used to the ways of the countryside. This stinks. These horses don't like them. Uh, it's not bad enough I have to walk past that one right there just to get to the water thing, and he sticks his head out every time I come past. It's horrible. I tell you, I'll give credit to the people that do this every day. All that hay and stuff's going in my throat and my nose. I, I might die. <laughs> You never know. Stinks, man. I'm gonna be sick. <coughs> I'm pissed off that we got we have to do extra work because they decided they weren't turning up, like, just because they can't be asked to come in or can't be bothered to wake up, and that's not fair. That's not how it works on a team. If you're a team, you play team rules. Like, if Eddie says we've got to be there at six o'clock on the day of the race, and they can't be bothered to get out of bed, what they're gonna miss the race? See, Eddie, Eddie's getting us back because some people are turning up late just not listening, so this is his payback. And it's a good one. I do like it. Despite initial complaints, the lads that did manage to turn up for the task complete the work. There you go. Now the horse is good, nice. Nice clean water. Nice clean bed. Got to top that up right now. Yeah. It's judgment time as Eddie arrives to find out how well the lads have done. How are my boys getting on? They've done really, really well. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a shock to the system. I should First think thing it was. this morning. They behaved. Very well. Did what they were told. Yeah, totally. Fantastic. You know, they got on well, with I'm it. pleased to hear that. First of all, I want to say well done for making the effort on a Saturday morning. Sometimes in life, you to do jobs that not everybody particularly finds romantic or nice, but everyone in life should get their just reward. I got mine, I'm quite certain, through hard work and grafting, you'll get yours. But I am pissed with the three who didn't make the effort. And uh, as a result of that, you had to go and do more work. You had to clean more stables. You all griped a bit, but your attitude was good. So your little reward will be on its way. Satisfied the lads have put in the graft, Eddie gives them an unexpected treat. Have you ever been at the races before? No. We're going horse racing this afternoon. Have some fun, enjoy the day. We're going to be in a VIP box, so well done. And uh, I appreciate you coming out here this morning. It was very important. Hobnobbing in the VIP enclosure is a very different way for these lads to spend a Saturday afternoon. How are you? Eddie owns a stake in a number of racehorses himself and is a regular at Sandown. He introduces the lads to Grand National winning jockey Mick Fitzgerald for some insider information. Right, well this is where you can see all the horses walk around that are going to run in the race. What do you fancy? What do I fancy? I fancy this blue team. Eddie has given the boys a chance to access the members stand where they have a chance to meet some famous faces. 
Now, what on earth are you coming racing for wearing these terrible dark suits? Oh, they're really nice. <laughs> what really nice? Well, that's cheap smutter. <laughs> cheap God, smutter we'll it is. See, what about the tic tac? Can you do a tic tac? I'll teach you the lessons quickly, right? right? Top of the head one. Come on. Bottle two. Carpet three. Four. Now you've learnt how to do tic tac. You've got to learn to dress yourselves. As you chuck you out, you're in members here. Chuck you out. You learn tic tac and change your clothes. Horrible they are. He complained about our suit. Did you see his trousers? Oh. <laughs> Crazy. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Eddie invites the group to a VIP area for a slap up lunch. No, what's this? Me, that's chicken. And what's this? Is that butter? Is that a bread roll? Nicky, you don't eat this food. I don't eat none of that food. That's sweet. Ooh, nasty food. What do you do? Burgers and chips and stuff. All right, sausage, chips and beans. This is really Try nice. It. The salmon is just quite amazing. I don't like them. Most of you know that I've been involved in, in, in motor racing for quite a considerable length of time. But not many of you know about my past growing up in Ireland. From a nice family, but we didn't have any money. I did some things which I'm not particularly proud of. No different to what you've done. But I had a wish that I wanted to go into motor racing in some form or other. I then believed that this dream was achievable. And that's something that you have to make sure is in the forefront of your mind. Despite all the things that are bringing you down, always believe enough in yourself that you can achieve it. I think for Eddie to achieve the things that he's achieved, I think he's a great like, um, inspiration to all of us, like, to, and uh, Mick as well. Like, I think they're both great inspirations because they've basically come from similar backgrounds to us, like not too much money when, we were young, when they were young and that. And they've made this all something special like they are now, and I've got great respect for them. Ten pound blazing Bailey, please. Ten round three. It has opened my eyes to the other side of life because before, I used to sit there and think, oh, because I've got my criminal record and I've done these bad things, like, no one really wants to know, like, no one wants to give me the second chance. And everybody's giving me, like, at the moment, everyone's giving me a second chance and giving me the chance to make something of myself. So I'm appreciative of it, like, and it's, it's made me realise that I can do something and I can be someone special. When you get that kit off, guys, don't take the rest of the shoes apart. Just get that cable out. The following Monday, the lads are back at work, and for the first time since the course started, they're all on time. Gently down slowly, yeah? Nice and slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Eddie is still unhappy with the lads who didn't show up on Saturday, particularly Marsh. Since the course began, Mosh has shown up late five times and his aggressive attitude has caused flare-ups. Go on then, walk away. Walk on, go on, go on. Eddie has been dubious of Mosh's commitment from the beginning. What happened to you? What Saturday. happened on Saturday? Oh, I didn't feel well on Saturday, I couldn't wake up. What? I had a little flu and fever. Are you having me over? Pardon? Are you having, are you telling me little porky pies here? No, 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 I had a flu, I couldn't wake up as well. I Nothing to do myself. with uh, alcohol? Uh, I was bit. out Friday night. It was self-inflicted, wasn't it? You put yourself in the position. If you'd really cared about this course, yeah. you'd have gone to bed earlier. You wouldn't have gone out. No, I would have walked Because I'm trying to figure out what is the matter with you. Mm. If I thought that I was wasting my time, I'd kick you out. I'm not. Do you know that? Yeah. You're not wasting your time. I had a bit of bad patches here, yeah, but now I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to come early, do what's there to do. You've got to find more commitment to this programme to make me feel happy. Do you understand that? Yes. Go back to your car and let's make sure the car is the best in the world. I think so. He has a great ability and he's got a twinkle in his eye. I want to help him. But one more slip up. History for Mosh. With a banger race looming in under five weeks' time and his reputation on the line, 
Eddie once again focuses his search for the lad that can hold the gang together and become the team leader. Today is D-Day. By the end of today, I have to have found my team boss. To help me do that, I've set up a challenge. I want to see who can give orders and who can delegate. I particularly want to see who can keep their head under extreme pressure and who is best able to handle a tricky situation. Dave, he's one of the people I'm looking out for, but I'm not really sure how popular he is within the ranks. I'll also be looking out for Richie. He's everybody's favourite, but he himself doesn't think he's got the head for it. Nicky probably has the best attitude, but I am not sure what he's like under pressure. We haven't seen that yet. Today, we find the person who's got what it takes. Eddie's military-style challenge is designed to put the lads under pressure and test their leadership skills. Listen up, guys. There are materials hidden somewhere in this valley. We're going to have to build a bridge across this crevasse. You will be taking it in turns to be leader. You have got one hour, so get on with it. By taking it in turns being leader, the lads will have to control their instinct to fight authority if they are to avoid conflict with one another. First of all, they must find the materials to build the bridge, which have been hidden under camouflage netting somewhere in the valley. Richie is first to take the leader's role. Well, you scout the side then, you scout one side. You're not listening, Richie. Yeah, we'll scout down there then. He said, all of us seen the key. Where was all of us at the same time? Down there. Exactly. Well, you go there then and check that. That's what I'm doing. After 20 minutes, they still haven't found the bridge materials. With Richie separated from the group, the others are left wandering without instruction and communication breaks down. Marsh! Look, tired, just there, look. Look, come down towards me. See the tire? Behind you. I'm hating being leader. I don't like being leader. I didn't want to ask the boss people about. I don't like bossing people about. Eddie feels it's time to regroup. Now, are you any further on in finding the materials to build the bridge? Basically, because we haven't, we haven't regrouped properly and we haven't had a chance to talk as a team. You yeah. are talking about regrouping and you were up there on your own and you had five of your men down here doing absolutely nothing. No control, no discipline, didn't know what they were doing, no instructions. I, spit, I sent them out into Pacific areas by themselves. I split them up into separate people so they could scout the banks. That's what I sent them out to do. I think we need to see somebody else. That's fine. That's all good by me. Give it to Dave, then. He wants to do it. Let's see how good Dave is. I'm Peter because I got shout out Eddie Jordan. Tried telling me I didn't tell nothing I didn't give no directions and I think he was down here standing there clapping his hands, keeping nice and comfortable while we were out doing stuff. And he tells me what I said and that. Really, you don't know jack. Hey, you, see, you see those planks of wood? Check up there! With Davis team leader, they quickly find what they've been searching for. What have we got here? Planks, shovels, boards, everything. Dave is keen to put his plan into action. Right, think about how we're going to use this first, because we might not need all of it. Anyone got any suggestions? Suggestion. Come on. Dave already looks like he's in control. Just start moving it. Don't discuss what we're going to do yet. Get all the materials over there first. And Mosh, why don't you help Garth instead of taking little things? He seemed to have a stronger sense of what was trying to be achieved. And under his stewardship, they found the material that looks like that they can build this bridge to cross. You're going to have that one there, and you're going to have that one on the end of there, yeah? That way you're going to give it more strength. Right, you got hold of that, Nick? Yeah. Right, now lift the Listen, whole thing. Yeah, too one close at, to the oh, bank, too close. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Move it back. Move it back your Despite way. making progress with the bridge, not everyone is motivated by Dave's leadership. Mosh! Go and do it. We need all the stuff down here. Just go up there and get it. Dave's getting very frustrated. He is convinced no one wants to listen to him anymore. Dave? Yes. The armband, give it to King, please. No, 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 I'll go last, thank you. King, do what you're told to do. You're the leader. 
Without the captain's armband, Dave struggles to get his views across. Yeah, literally, look. You're not listening, you're following your own point of view. Learn to listen. You come up with an idea how to get someone on the other side. You know so what, shut up. I don't want to hear that from you, man. You're f***ing me off. No, he says he's got to have a slant. He doesn't have a slant. Don't talk to me, man. She's f***ing me off, man. You're supposed to be working as a team. Don't talk to me. I saw you out right here. Don't talk to me. Don't listen. You like to have things your own way. When have you ever been there for the team? When you're suddenly put in charge here, you're all there, all up front, all on the order of out. But when we needed we you, this? like yesterday... No, 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 no. It's arguing and just get on with it, innit? We ain't got long. I do have a bad temper, a rather nasty one, actually. Say if someone aggravates me, they'll know about it. I'll put my fist through a window, a wall. They're now starting to fight with each other, and this is the worst thing you could ever hope for in this situation. But you got certain people that just don't listen, they just listen to their own advice. <laughs> One time I got in a bit of fight, he ended up on the floor. Out of curiosity, I stepped in his head and it was, his head started bleeding. Didn't it? Some of my boys had to run off because police and all sorts came and we just stuck out. King's pissed me off, yeah? He won't, like, he'll listen to everyone else's suggestions except for mine. Yeah, that's you, like, taking People them out and sorting them really. out, you get me? If I wasn't here, I think there'd be a dust up between King and Dave very quickly. Uh, there's a big clash of characters there. I'd rather walk out of this whole programme and forget the whole thing than be a team manager, especially if this can happen. If I'm a team manager, they ain't gonna listen to me. As the challenge heads towards meltdown, Eddie's choice for a team boss becomes critical. The team's falling apart. I want you to lead this team. Something bad's gonna come out of this. What we've got to do is all pick up this, put the end on there. Eddie's search for a team boss means the lads are taking on a specially designed leadership challenge. Yeah, so we have to take it back up and do it. Finding someone who thinks he can lead and inspire his team is proving much harder than expected. I ain't got no ideas, I don't want to be a captain. I don't even know what to do, I hate being doing things like this. Are you going to do any work or are you going to just slack around in the car? Well, I'm captain. <laughs> I'm the captain. I sit down where I feel like it. You still in charge? Yeah. Don't you think you need to be organising something oh, else okay. alongside of this? Yeah. Well, get it sorted. Dan, go. You know what? Being a leader, it looks easy, but it's not. I'll tell you that from now. No one listens to you. No one wants to hear your opinions. Having found the buggy and almost completed the bridge, the lads discover not all the pieces have been provided. With nobody able to find a solution, morale threatens to collapse. Which you just a while ago said that he gives up. I gave up ages ago. Everybody's upset with each other. Dave feels like he's not getting listened to. It's the team, the team's it's falling apart. Yeah, bit by bit. Slowly but surely, yeah. the team's falling apart. Soon there'll be no team left. As no one will listen to his suggestions, Dave decides to sit it out. Did you give up? Listen, I'm avoiding the fight, yeah? Yeah, no, no. Just because no I try and get my point up across, yeah? King decided to try and confront me and try and start a fight, yeah? Yeah. That's what I'm avoiding. It takes a bigger man's turn and walk away and stand a fight. That's what I've done. Exactly. Well, why? No, you're giving up. You're avoiding it and hiding from it. Get on with it, ignore it. After some persuading from Richie, Dave rejoins the team. Those little ramps, they're for the boards. Get buggy halfway and then swap the boards over so you've got to ramp down. He's right. No doubt. That's the worst thing. He is right. To complete the challenge, they must drive the buggy over the bridge without it collapsing. Without a clear leader, the challenge has taken twice as long as expected. Although all the lads struggled at being in charge, Eddie must still choose one to lead the team. What we're trying to achieve here today is not just working as a team. I need to find a leader someone that can help me pull everyone together in a crisis. Someone who can create that motivation. Now, I've chosen... I've chosen Dave. Dave, I want you to lead this team. I don't want to do it. Why not? None of these, except for the exception of a couple, are going to listen to me because they didn't listen to me there and what I said was right. Well, I'm going to take that chance. I heard what went on and I'd like you to be the team boss. 
Disappointed with Dave's reluctance, Eddie pulls him aside for a chat. I think you are the best one to lead this group. You're going to do a fine job. I'm going to help you. How do I get it so that they actually treat me as a leader and not just someone that wants it their own way? You'll have to earn that respect. It's life. You can become the respected leader by showing them by example, by leading them. Not by shouting at them, but by listening. Offering them the chance to participate in what's happening. Not every person that ever worked for Jordan liked or respected me, but generally, over a period of time, with things that you do, how you do it, the style you do it, understanding, listening, and generally giving the best decisions, you win them over. Even though I don't want to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah? I'll try my best to win their respect. I'll try my best. That's all I can That's do. That's all you expect? Mm-hmm. I'll do it. I've got to say, I think it was a shot to everyone in the team. I think it's the one decision because a leader, a team leader, although it's not a power position or anything, it should have been someone that everyone respects, everyone gets along with, and that can talk to the team on a serious level without, without anyone getting angry at him or thingy. And that's that's not that's not Dave. He's made the the wrong guy captain. Right? Something bad's gonna come out of this. Let's hope David knows his job. Hope he does it to his fullest, just like he says. And let's hope he doesn't get certain people pissed off. No comment. I mean, I'm thinking in my head at the moment who I want for each job. And I'm looking at people's strengths and their weaknesses. And at the moment, because of the issues that's went on with King, I can't see any place for him. I could be wrong, but I have a good feeling about Dave that in the end, he'll win the respect of all of them over. I just hope he doesn't do something wrong, because I think the team's going to kill him. Next week on Bad Boy Racers, it all kicks off as attitudes reach an all-time low. If they're not going to turn up, then really, they need to be off the programme. I take your overalls off and leave the premises. And Eddie fights to save his project from collapse. This is a crisis meeting. Am I wasting my time? 